Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are finally going to be hopefully putting the HHO generator to the test. And what we're going to do is wrap this thing up by creating a, a flashback bubbler. So we got about four and a half inches of PVC here since, since we're men, we'll call that six inches because, you know, <laughs> got a syringe here. This will be our needle tip that the, the flame will come out of. And these hose barbs happen to fit this syringe I have just about perfectly. It almost threads in there. So I'll probably just take that down a hair on the lathe, stick it in there with some epoxy after filling it with brass wool to act as a flashback arrestor, just so the syringe body doesn't blow up on us. But let's, uh, let's throw these end caps on the lathe so I can drill them and tap them out, get the hose barbs in there, and we'll see how this sucker goes. Now, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, you know, <laughs> become part of our community. It's, it's a good time. We're learning a lot and doing some pretty wild projects. So uh, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. All right, so I'm over here at the world's shittiest metal lathe. And what we're going to do is reverse chuck these caps and give them a quick drill out with a 7 16 bit because we are tapping these with quarter 18 NPT that's one down all right so we'll just tap these suckers out throw our hose barbs in there and we're in good shape beautiful nice tight fit we'll throw some pipe dope on there do the same to the other and we're golden and we'll slap this together now let's dope her up probably not a good thing to say in the context of needles and syringes Oh god, we're demonetized, that's for sure. Alright, nice. Alright, so let's, uh, let's see how this OD fusion works. Oh, it's uh, sealed up there pretty tight. Do a liberal application. Liberal arts degree. Get down in there as well. And give them the shtick. Pretty nice. Stuff is clear too, which is nice. When you use the purple primer, everything turns... I mean, this stuff's already kind of a purple tinge. But I like that. Not having to fuss with the primer and all that. That's kind of sweet. Now the only pain in the ass is going to be filling this. I'm going to have to like use a syringe and squirt down in there or take this off and fill it. I'll probably just fill it with a syringe, but that's kind of going to be the only pain in the butt. All right, so we'll let that cure up. It's supposed to cure in 24 hours, so we'll give it 15 minutes before we test. So let's get started on the syringe here. So I'm just going to turn these threads down a hair on the lathe and kind of get that to be a nice fit. So I'm just going to take some acetone and clean this sucker off just to make sure there's no oils from the lathe on there. Whew! Acetone in a cut. Never feels good. Right to the kidney. And we'll epoxy that sucker in there. Oh, we're forgetting the brass wool. Alright, so let's stuff this syringe body. I want it to be pretty densely packed with the wool since the HHO gas will pass through here no problem, but you know, if there were some gaps uh, that you got room for, you know, a HHO explosion, which is a, a no bueno. Alright, that's pretty nicely packed. That is sharp as hell. Gotta be careful. I'm gonna have to create a blunt tip there. Gotta remember to do that. And now just epoxy that in. Wait a few minutes and we'll be good. And we'll smush her in there. Oh uh, yeah, that's nice and airtight. Beautiful. That's sweet. I need something to hold it upright. That'll keep it nice and flat. Let that ring of epoxy cure. All right, everything's been curing for about an hour. I got this little syringe here. 
going to use it as a funnel to fill this sucker. It's going to be a pretty slow process. So the critical thing this is doing, one, it's, it's scrubbing our gas and, you know, removing any potential sodium hydroxide contamination that's in the gas by absorbing it into the water here, which there really shouldn't be any. It's not likely to carry over. But if the bubbling in there is vigorous enough, it's going to happen. And then the other thing is this is acting as a flashback arrester. So we're going to fill this up pretty much all the way. We're going to leave a little room for that water there to fill back in. But I'll probably fill it right till we can't see it at the cap there. We know we have just a tiny, tiny bit of headspace. All right, so we got what is likely a very small amount of headspace in there. I'm just going to hook this sucker up to a 12 volt battery here. Now, a lot of you guys commented that uh, multimeter, Jesus, 12 volts is not ideal for HHO generation and I'll take your word on it. I don't really know, but that's the only power source I really have that can deliver the current I need here. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice little flow of gas coming out of there. That's pretty sweet. I think that'll be enough. We might not be able to run it for a long time. Just given the fact this cell is probably going to get hot and our battery voltage is going to be dropping pretty quick because this is drawing. Let's see how much current it's actually drawing. I'm very curious here. Drawing 10, 11 amps. You can see it's dropping because the voltage of the cell is dropping. It's not able to deliver power as quickly. But our starting current was over 11 amps. Quite a bit of power. The power. All right, she seems pretty stout. The epoxy's still a little sticky, but we got plenty of fixation there. So I'm just going to get a length of tubing and fire her up. Holy shit, it's the real deal now. We got a flame. Whoa, flashback. Holy shit, did you see that? That was terrifying. <laughs> oh my god. It appears the brass wool is not cutting it. So maybe we're definitely getting a pretty major bit of flashback. Ooh, the water squirt. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So I guess I'll try putting a little bit of steel wool in the tip here. Where the flame front's developing. Alright, so I've hooked up to the 5 volt rail of a computer power supply. And I'm hoping that'll give us enough juice. Oh yeah, we're going. I don't think we're generating quite enough though. Look at the water vapor forming. That's pretty neat. Alright, so I got a piece of nichrome wire here. Got a melting point around 2500, 2600 Fahrenheit, which, you know, isn't super high. All right, so it's not quite the uh, earth shattering destroyer I hoped it would be. I'll need a more powerful computer supply, <laughs> a more powerful power supply for that. But this little thing does work. I mean, it does generate one hell of a hot flame. It's just really small. I need more volume. And I think the cell can actually take more power. It's it's not not particularly hot. The hottest thing is actually probably my power leads. They're pretty darn warm. Before we call it quits, um, I'm going to try adding a little more electrolyte to the cell and seeing if we can't pull a little more power out of this thing. All right, so I just added a little more sodium hydroxide to it, a little more electrolyte, if you will. Because we all know Brondo's got electrolytes, and plants love it, so it's got to be good. Alright, so we're putting 5 volts at 16 amps in it. Our production's definitely increased with the addition of more sodium hydroxide. So that's pretty cool. Oh my god, the leads are about to melt. 
Jesus. It's definitely melting the aluminum. I can see it reaching temperature. It's just not quite punching a hole through it. I got one of these stainless steel condiment cups here that was trashed. I think the aluminum is just too good of a conductor. I think we're getting through. Holy sh... Whoa! My needle's melting. Jesus Christ! Die! Oh crap. Jesus! Alright, uh, that's a... Wow! This is a bit more than... <laughs> I bargained for. Oh my god. The needle just totally disintegrated. That was awesome and terrifying. Wow. Didn't think that is what was going to happen because we were actually we were making good progress on that. All right, this is my my last green tip. All right, we're operating. I think we do have a small hole in the cup. Yeah, we got a little pinhole in there. Whoa, there we go again. What is the deal? This is crazy. Wow. This stuff is nuts. It's just eating the needles. Look at that. Something works, but <laughs> it's not working the way I want it to, that's for sure. My needles keep burning. <laughs> it, it, I guess it's because it's a pretty, you know, obviously it's a stoichiometric ratio of hydrogen and oxygen, but apparently it is still pretty oxidizing. Uh, that oxygen still likes to bond with other other elements and that's what's got to be happening there maybe I'll give it one more shot with a, a bigger needle see if that maybe conducts the heat away a little better alright so I got a bigger needle significantly larger gauge I usually use this for injecting resin in parts I think we're just gonna have a bunch of flashbacks and that'll probably be the end of it but let's see yeah pretty much it's a flashback machine. It's pretty cool. I'm almost getting a sustaining reaction. Whoa! Shit! Something... No bueno. No bueno. Woo! <laughs> what a finale. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh god. Alright guys, well, I hate to admit defeat right now, but I'm totally out of needle tips. I think the green, whatever gauge that is, is, is the right way to go. Sustains a flame nicely and allows a little bit of back pressure to build in the system. Just enough. We got a few tweaks to work out on this sucker. Uh, I gotta install some thicker gauge cables here because these are about to melt. They're super hot. So, at this point it just needs some refinements. So I'm going to order some more needle tips on eBay and try to figure out a better power supply here. I might stack a couple computer power supplies to see if we can't get more power into it. Maybe add a little more electrolyte and some better cables because god damn are these things hot. So guys, please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and hit that little dingle blurry next to it so you actually get notified when I post. And I also have a Patreon set up, so if you want to support the channel <laughs> and help me uh, recover some costs here and keep the videos rolling, uh, I will post a link to that in the description and probably right in the uh, upper left-hand corner of your video there. So thank you so much, guys, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.